The views and opinions expressed on Deliberately Linked are entirely those of the host, who are completely responsible for all show content. These views and opinions are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure in any way any kind of condition, or to promote any specific lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or personal practice. Nor is the information presented deemed to be accurate or verifiable. What is up, Deliberately Linked viewers? Lace them up and lock it in. Because on today's show, we welcome you, Team See You Later Leaner, where results are typical and pros are made. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Atkinson, the diet doc himself. Super exciting, Adam. Super exci- <laughs> I'm super excited to be with you. I'm super excited for you to tell your story and share some of uh, your expertise with our listeners and our viewers. So it's, it's a very exciting time. Yeah, yeah welcome. thanks for having me. I love doing this stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we're super excited to have you. Like Mark said, um, a lot going on right now in the world. Uh, he touched on the whole Corona yeah. thing right right now. Like, what? This is this is wild. And you know, I kind of wanted to open up the show just briefly because I feel like everyone definitely is tired about hearing about the, the whole COVID nineteen crap. Um, but briefly, real quick, how how has this COVID nineteen how has this affected either yourself personally or your business? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, definitely having a trickle down where it's affecting everyone. I have few clients who were servers and restaurant yeah. owners and they're having to watch their funding obviously with this but however we're all susceptible to challenges and unfortunately right now everyone is faced with the same challenge right now which i find interesting and that's just a chance for us all to unite right now it's right. a and, great point you know i went to bed last night and just kind of hugged my wife and held her. And as a business owner, you know, you say so dedicated to the grind. Mm. It's really nice to connect with some of my people again, my wife, my mom. I watched uh, one of my um, colleagues from college preach his sermon online. And I never would have gotten the chance to do that had That's this cool. stuff yeah. not been happening. I went to Christian college, so actually I saw two of my friends uh, preach, which was wow. really cool. But when I went to bed last night, I told my wife, I said, you know, I, like probably everyone else in this world, suffers from a little bit of anxiety, mm-hmm. and I think this is going to be the best training for when yeah. things are back to normal, that, man, the stuff I worried about before this virus was nothing, and yeah. like I'm going to be able to overcome anything after this virus. So yeah, absolutely. I really feel like the things I used to worry about aren't going to mean shit to me, yeah. like, no, you know... Sure. Uh, politely speaking, but just kind of, uh, I want that to resonate with our audience. You know, when we make this, make it through this, you know, the stock market's going to go up, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, we're going to shake hands, we're going to hug, we're going to do all these things. Heck, me and Mike Davies might like toilet paper each yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. If Mike's <laughs> listening, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, um, I think that, uh, all this is going to pass. We're all going to end up stronger. And um, I think that there's kind of a lesson to this where um, sometimes we're just not as okay as we think we are. And also some of the things we worry about really are not that big of a deal. Yeah. In, I, I think it's like anything this. though, especially in your profession, um, you know, in training, I think one of the constant messages is short-term pain, long-term gain. Right. And I think this is this perspective of this event applies to that. I mean, everybody's going through this short-term pain, um, but really it can open your doorways to lots of things. Like you said, I, I realized all these opportunities I was missing. Mm-hmm. And on the long-term, these are now things you can apply to where you're going and make the next generation after this, the next step after this even better. Yeah. So I think so many people lose sight of opportunity and here it is, you're putting it into a perspective of is my opportunities are still going to be there. Now I have a better, maybe a, a better thought process, a better way of viewing those opportunities mm-hmm. to make, you know, see you later leaner even better, right. which yeah. is going to be hard to do because see you later leaners. I mean, it's, it's already epic and it's like, how do we go from there? But <laughs> it's definitely um, epic. And I guess for our listeners and viewers who maybe uh, are just now learning about Adam and, you know, his, his brand of see you later leaner. I guess, give them just a quick fill-in on who you are and what you do. Yeah, Yeah, so we work with a wide variety of athletes, a lot in the competition prep world, Mm -hmm. but we do a lot of weight loss as well. 
Um, we even do muscle gaining, pretty much everything. But we run a nutrition consulting business and also um, like a personal training business here at the house as well. So we connect with clients pretty much daily. Um, now we've had to shift a lot of things to home workouts. And I've seen a lot of trainers selling home workout plans. What we did is if you're even a member of us, you automatically start getting home workouts right. when yeah. DeWine shut down. And, and I'm glad because DeWine kept me ahead of the curve because yeah. when I saw restaurants go down, and I think we were probably the first state to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew gyms were going to be next. They were next. And yeah. that was Sunday night. I think it was Monday that they said, no more gyms. Right. Well, I stayed up till I think it was like five in the morning, Sunday night. I said, I'm getting a block of home workouts ready mm -hmm. because I want to, this is going to be the time I have to do that. So that's what I did. And sure enough, Monday, they closed down the gyms and every email I got from a client in return, they got those COVID-19 workouts, as I yeah. call them, mm -hmm. gave people some ideas for what they can use at home. And I didn't charge them extra for it. We all need to stick together. And I wanted to worry about client retention, not right. bringing on new clients during a horrible time. Now, we have had people reach out to Just Diet. And yeah. I'm like, you're signing up at a great time because you get these free workouts to help you get through this difficult time. Yeah. And Adam, I think that's, you know, I tip my hat off to you because you have seen a lot of either trainers or Fitspo individuals off of social media platforms trying to monopolize off of the situation at hand saying, Hey, here's all these work at home workouts you can buy through me. And although you could do the same thing, you understand what everyone's going through right now. People yeah. are losing their jobs. Uh, people either aren't getting paid right now. So you're like, Hey, if you're part of this team, if you're part of this family, we're still here to take care of you, and we're not going to add any additional costs on that because, hey, we're all going through this together. And I think that's yep. a great message for our entrepreneurs. You know, our, our show covers a wide range of individuals from mm -hmm. uh, singles to parents to high school age kids, and a lot, we have a lot of entrepreneurs. And I think that's a message Josh and I have always sold to them. You're bigger than your product. Yeah. You know, and you have to remember that this really your business is built on relationships. Yeah. You, even if, if it's not a one-on-one -on -one like you are, where you're constantly working with your athletes face-to-face, -face, if, right. if you're a home builder or a remodeler or a plumber, whatever, it's still built on relationships because you make those. And then it's that third party chit chat mm -hmm. that really solidifies who you are and allows you to be successful. And what you've done is you said, okay, bigger picture here. Um, this is less about dollars and cents mm -hmm. and more about the relationships I have. Cause ultimately that's what's sustaining. Well, short term and correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but short term, yes, you not charging for all this, the time and hours that you're putting into this short term might be affecting you right now. But long term speaking, those clients that you have now, they're going to remember, Hey, when we were all down in the dumps, Adam was still there to support us. And I think a lot of these companies where they're looking at it in a, in a negative outlet and a negative yeah. light is they're saying, hey, this is, gives us an opportunity to really go make a lot of money. And when all is said back to normal, the individual individuals that when things are normal, they're going to be like, you know what? When we were all down, you kind of took advantage of us. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's we've talked recently on the show at Visionary Meals like – we're doing everything we can to help out our customers, given, like you said, gyms closed down and stuff. Now our pickup locations are not an option, so we're doing home delivery. And yeah. we're giving our clients the option, if you're home, we're going to deliver your meal straight to you and waive the shipping cost to make this as affordable as possible. Yeah, and I know so you guys were doing that. And I think the cream's going to rise to the top, not only with competitors who can uh, – grind through this what i'm calling a bird box prep right yeah. now yeah, for sure <laughs> and you know businesses like you they're taking the initiative to take a little more of a hit than you probably already are right. and just helping people yeah and uh that's what my whole business has thrived on i knew people would call me in a non-essential business but um, that just means fitness isn't important to them because some people this is going to be a central business and mental health is so connected with Absolutely. fitness Absolutely. that what, what a great time to focus on fitness. And yeah. this actually is one of the things you can have and you don't even have to hire me as a coach. You can go online and do some workouts. You can even look at 
we're actually posting our home workouts as well on my Instagram well, Adam, stories. Adam, real quick, why don't you throw a did. plug out there? Where, where can they find you? Oh, yeah. Um, if you look at See You Later Leaner on Instagram, that's my page. And we're okay. sharing our daily home workouts on our stories. And this is actually you. This is not like a bot guy that does it for you. <laughs> Correct. Right? Well, okay. yeah. you know, originally I actually was using someone for my social yeah. media. But we're actually go- going to take that in my own hands for okay. right now. Um, because I actually am connecting through more people yeah. online yeah. right now and in this time you know between facebook and instagram i really am trying to kind of run my own content share yeah. my own stories and also and you guys also have a fantastic website I oh mean, thank you yeah, it's thank a great you. website easy to maneuver through and it's very informational we kept it pretty simple yeah. also like no one wants a bunch of banners and stuff yeah. like no. loading on their <laughs> phones and i do think most people still go to websites Absolutely. from phones oh, so, much so you know when you get too fancy with that it's hard to for phones to kind of handle that mm-hmm. type of which uh, is another great structure. message to our entrepreneurs <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes sometimes keeping it simple is the best method mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. and uh you're your value is going to be in what you provide your your clients and oh, uh, yeah. the product. And, yeah. you know, everyone with me kind of gets something different. I try to meet people where they are and what they need. And that's definitely key. Mm-hmm. And uh, communication is just key. Clients telling you what they need. Clients are going to have different expectations than other clients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some will be more needy. And I don't charge them more for that. I just try to teach them a way to structure and a way to communicate well. And that's how I operate. I have some clients who just don't really check in all that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as long as they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, that's okay. But there is a time where I'm like, hey, you're four weeks out and we need to make sure you send a weekly summary yeah, every right. week. And yeah, I have well, it's a, hard for you to do your job without the information. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But he said something earlier that I thought was, I think maybe listeners might have just glossed right over. And mm-hmm. I want to, I actually want to add on to that. Please. You said Governor DeWine allowed us to be ahead of the curve in, in your business. And I thought the key point to that was, is you were able instantly to go planning instead of freaking out and getting mm-hmm. in a panic. You're like, okay, now how can I supply something for my clientele to help them? Not so much from a, I want to keep them and I want them to keep paying me. Right. Because you knew they would wake up the next day. They would get information. Their gyms have shut down. And it is. In their lives, this is essential. This is what they do. It would be a panic. And you knew instantly yeah. they'd be able to pull this up and say, okay, I can take a fresh breath of air. Right. You know, Adam sent me something. I can accomplish this. And you actually dialed that, that issue down for them. And I think people need to understand that when you're dealing with people and you've built relationships, it's not about, it's not about just what is the end game. Right, it's about right. all those times in the middle. Mm-hmm. It's those times of understanding who they are emotionally, understanding the needs, right. some high, some less, um, and knowing how to really dial that in to those people specifically. I thought that was fantastic, and I didn't want anybody listening yeah. to gloss over that. Well, and I think the other important part is, obviously, you just hit on, like, Coach, where are you and all the uncertainties? Yeah. But we talk about on this show all the time, for ex- especially our entrepreneurs and individuals wanting to start a business or starting a business of – the sacrifice that you have to take. I mean, you just said it. You were up until five in the morning because like Mark said, when your clients woke up the next morning, there was going to be a panic. Oh my gosh, what do I do? And you knew that. You've been in the game long enough that you said, okay, I need to be able to supply my clients with what they're going to need in this time. And if that meant you pulling an all-nighter, that is what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur like yourself. And honestly, I think if more individuals could take note of that, their business would... begin to just explode just like your ha- yours has in the past. And I think that's great. Yeah. I think that next morning, I think DeWine always speaks at two. Yeah. Maybe I, yeah. I woke up at like noon. It was like two hours before <laughs> right. I started getting all the emails mm-hmm. of my gym closed. Oh my God. Yeah. Now what? And yeah. you know, it's a, uh, that's tough. And Virginia just closed yesterday Did and that. then Georgia, I think closed. So they, I think Florida as well closed last week. They were kind of like my Florida's kind of state. breaking into the hot spots. They're yeah. closing down their hot spots. Right. He, mm-hmm. He's actually taking more of the Germany approach. He's only shutting down the hot spot areas and allowing everybody else to just basically wash your hands, don't lick walls, stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I think we, you know, we talked about it before the show, and and Josh and I have spent time on this. You know, I'm I always try to take the opportunity um, perspective into everything, whether mm-hmm. it's positive or negative. What is the opportunity that's creating? 
and we said it's a moment like this, which is sad. I mean, America runs on small business. Yeah. And I love that. I love that we are the land of the free and people who can dream. And if they can dream it and they're willing to put in the hard work, then mm -hmm. it can become to fruition. But I think it's in moments like this where you see quality brands. You see yeah. people who are truly passionate about their craft. Mm -hmm. um, those are the people that choose to literally sit there and tread water for as long as necessary. For sure. Mm -hmm. Because they know at the end this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. And I mean, you've, Adam, how long have you been doing this? I've coached since 2002. So yeah, I've been at it a long time. That's a long time. That's why he's one of the best in the game. But I mean, that's a long <laughs> and time. And we talk about cust customer retention. Yes. And, and to be where you are right now, I mean, everyone knows the brand See You Later Leaner and the name Adam Atkinson. And like that is 2002. That's a, like, yeah. that's a long time, I mean, like Mark said. If we think about it, 2002... I mean, I guess people maybe look at fitness now and be like, okay, everybody does fitness. In 2002, it wasn't like that. Yeah, it's always been yeah. a thing, I mean, but not to the degree that it is today. I mean, back then, you're still thinking a little taboo type, you oh, know? Oh, absolutely. Well, and even, I, before, sorry to cut you off, Adam, but even something even more to note, there are so many trainers in today's fitness arena, and because of that, it's because of post-social media. You yes. were pre-social media, and so yes. you were able to establish what you have created without any social media platforms, unless you were using MySpace. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I don't like that. Is that even a thing? No. So yeah, it's just super impressive. Like honestly, in two thousand two, if you were a trainer and you wanted to make it, you got on MTV and were part of some like bogus reality show. That's hilarious. <laughs> and that was yeah, how yeah. you made it, right? And then people would contact you. Um, you know, I was a part of uh, a lot of forums back then, and mm -hmm. that's how some trainers got found. That's where a very small snippet of, like, kind of programming came from, where okay. people would post in forums, here's what I'm doing for my workouts. And uh, that was just a pool for um, really bad and um, some really good information. Yeah. You know, some of the people that are standing tall today, John Meadows, I was yeah. in forums with him back in the day. And yeah. um, I took a lot of stuff from John. Um, I, I don't even know if John knows that. But if John is listening, thank you very much for all you shared back in my growing years. But there's you know, many other mentors. For and sure. of course, Dr. Joe Klemzeski has been my right hand man since like probably 2011. And mm -hmm. that's where See You Later Leaner really took off was when we started doing macronutrient dieting. Yep. And yeah. really, um, I broke away from powerlifting at that point in my career pretty heavily. And I love powerlifting. I just got kind of bored of it. I right. felt like I was coaching the same three commands all day long, the mm -hmm. same three lifts. Uh, I, I kind of, I felt like it was like the NASCAR fitness mm -hmm. to me yeah. to Left a turn. degree. Left turn. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, uh, I still love the sport. I think it's awesome. Absolutely. I, yeah. I actually enjoy the subjectivity of bodybuilding though. The fact that I don't know how this is going to happen. And that's what annoys a lot of people right. with bodybuilding. Yeah. So what annoys people has actually attracted me to it. And that's where, you know, we see powerhouses like Katie Ann just uh, right. crushing it, who's on our team. And she loves powerlifting, and she's actually done both. But I know for a fact that Katie likes powerlifting for the lack of subjectivity for with sure. it. Yeah. So, well, Adam, I kind of want to back up a little bit because already in this segment, you have already named some pretty big names, I think, for athletes all over the United States, but specifically in the Ohio Columbus region. You've said Mike Davies and John Meadows, two very highly respectable individuals in our community. Oh, absolutely. Um, but that, and there, there are many others. I mean, individuals that have uh, built amazing businesses, Dylan Bear and, and some other amazing individuals. How do you adapt in such a saturated industry? Well, I think... You know, me, Mike, Dylan, um, all these coaches, we can only do so much mm -hmm. ourselves. And uh, so as long as you're running a good business, you're going to have customers come to you, which I think is definitely key. For sure. So we've definitely stayed ahead of the curve. Uh, having a scientific approach yeah. is definitely key. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that is what's made our businesses rise to the top. It's really funny because uh, I'll throw uh, Paul Revelia out there. Um, when people inquire with me, it's interesting 
a lot of people will be like, I have one more phone call. <laughs> and I almost always know it's going to be Paul. And funny enough, sometimes people even end up talking to Dr. Joe and they're trying to figure out, are we going with Joe, Paul, or Adam? Right. And we're all kind of under that same scientific umbrella. Yeah, sure. And it's just really interesting. And sometimes you'll see people uh, pop up on Paul's page where I'm like, yeah, they contacted me and they went with Paul. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, you know, we have people that choose us and people that choose Joe as well. Right. We had uh, somebody who uh, got a pro card with Joe and she was inquiring with me like maybe eight weeks or eight months prior, yeah. you know, so it was kind of funny when I saw her get her pro card. I'm like, that girl messaged me like <laughs> right. eight months ago. Right. But I so, think if people listen, though, you notice, is there competition for clientele? Of course, you want to work with everybody. Right. But there, there's not like this anger. No. You know what I mean? Each, each, there's such a well-respect in this business. Mm -hmm. And there should be in all business yeah. to understand certain personalities just match with certain personalities. Yeah. And, and sometimes your approach may not be their approach. Although you're going to take in the same thought process, it may be just that personality of the approach. Right. You know, some people are screamers. Some people are not Correct. screamers. Oh, yeah. Um, and people, I think our entrepreneurs have to understand that just because you're not a match, does it's not personal. Right. You know what I mean? It's funny you said that because I had a girl who literally wanted me to yell at her. I'm like, I don't even know if I can <laughs> yeah, do that, you right. know? So I actually <laughs> did send her your mic because yeah. I was that's like... That's more Mike's style. That is Mike's style. Sure. And that's why me and Mike get along so well is I think me and Mike, out of uh, all the people in Ohio, can probably take mm -hmm. um, some notes from each other yeah. pretty heavily just because how opposite we yeah. are. Right. But that's what's awesome is I think that's what makes me and Mike get along Which so well. <laughs> I'll toot both of your guys' horns because you guys really do tackle different parts of the market. I mean, you and Mike really are very highly respected individuals, not only in this region, but I think pretty far out into um, the Ohio region and just, you know, the regional states around that. But Mark, you know, we talk about all the time on this show about brand identity oh, yeah. and the importance of it. And I think you were kind of just touching on it accidentally about your brand identity. If an individual was like, I want to be trained by Adam Atkinson, whether it's lifestyle, bikini, bodybuilding, whatever it might be, what, what would you say Adam's brand identity is? Yeah, for me, it, it really is like coming into a family here. And it, it this can be whatever you want it to be. And I have people who get really close to me. I have people who just try to send a weekly summary and they don't really tell me much about themselves. Mm -hmm. Some people are more private like that. And um, whether they're hurting inside or they're afraid to have that connection, maybe they've been burned by a coach in the past yeah. uh, for whatever reason. Um People can be that way. I think one of the biggest things is to you always have to remind your clients to open the door um, and talk to you. And even when people are paying you, it's almost like they respect you too much because um, they see you as a authority figure because you're you're like the coach, you're mm -hmm. the boss. Well, you're the I, diet dog. They yeah, and I, I almost <laughs> cringe saying those yeah. words yeah. because I don't see myself that yeah. way. Right. And... Just like an interesting story. So I have multiple coaches and I had a client who had actually reached out to one of my coaches, Zach, and she was like, I'm thinking I would maybe like to work with you. And he's like, why would you want to switch from Adam to me? And she's like, I just have a lot of questions and I just feel like he might be too busy for me to ask. Mm. And so he emailed me. I email her. I'm like, hey, can we jump on the phone? And we basically talked it out. I was like, you just have to know that I have yeah. an open door policy. Yeah. But man, here's a client who's paying me and afraid to use a service by me. Interesting. And so I basically told her, you know, if you do the same thing with Zach, you're going to want to switch coaches again, again. Yeah. in a month. Right. I'm like, yeah. be open right. to asking us. And uh, we fix things. Things are great. Yeah. And uh, that's a hard conversation yeah. to have. But I think it's something. But you tackled it head on. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's another great thing. It's like, you know, you see that obstacle. You just have to go tackle it head on. Well, it's great that she reached out to one of our coaches. Because sure. had it been <laughs> anyone else, they would have been like, of oh, course. yeah, we're yeah, going to go you. ahead and yeah. take you. Yeah. So I actually <laughs> did get the opportunity to communicate that with her and yeah. i think that's key i think she was then surprised 
like, oh, if I don't hold this in, he actually will answer and help me or jump on the phone mm -hmm. with me. But, I mean, so, we've talked on the show a hundred times. There's a generation where communication is a uh, uh, generation of individuals where communication is just so difficult for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's almost awkward. Mm -hmm. You know, we're face to face. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just it's sure. intimidating. It's awkward. And I mean, Adam, it, seriously, you're a Google search, dude. I mean, it's <laughs> you Google search you and it's like, oh, man, I have hundreds of thousands of pages I can go through and read articles and so I get I can see where it'd be intimidating but yeah. I tell everybody you know my first time meeting Adam I'm like I thought I, I felt like I'd already known you right. right I mean he's literally one of the easiest guys to gel with yeah I think through email that gets difficult yeah, yeah. because there's just this wall where yeah, it's right. just email yeah. and that can be intimidating so sometimes a phone call an audio a yeah. Facebook live can really engage with your people or hit home yeah. more. And um, that's great that you're utilizing all communication uh, platforms to once again, dial into what does this client need? Well, especially for a business like yours, you have to, I mean, yeah, you have people in your backyard, but you have people across the state. You have people across the country. You have people out of the country. Right. So you, <laughs> you have to utilize those platforms. Absolutely. Yeah. I have clients in Australia, so yeah. <laughs> they're emailing me when we're in bed, you know, it's right. totally different. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, it's a, cra it's crazy to me for people to think about going into business and then instantly handcuffing themselves. And then I sit right here with mm -hmm. this guy who we're sitting basically in central Ohio yeah. and we're talking about clientele in Australia. And I mean, from all the negative things that technology has created, this is one of the amazingly positive things to be able to build relationships almost as if, you know, you're in person together with many different platforms of communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're still able to provide them an amazing service. Yeah, that's the key. And then just uh, communicating what people need or yeah. trying to figure out who they are. I think the psychology is always going and to be And you brought the best. that up multiple times, trying to figure out who they are, what they yeah. want, who they are. I've heard that multiple times. And I guess coming in here, uh, my naive, me being naive, I'm thinking – okay, well, person wants to go train for this X, Y, and Z. And it's, you're, you're basically telling me it's not like that. Right. You're, you're basically saying, no, we have to really break this down and make it independent to each individual. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for instance, I have a client who likes to cook their food on Saturday. So their check-in day is Thursday just to make sure, yep. like, if you have changes, here's what they're going to be. And um, I just know that helps them so much by... Knowing that they're, so you, you know, do this every week with is, every client. Yeah, yeah. I kind of break it up where like some clients check in Monday, some check in you know different days of the week. And I, you would, you adapt to their schedule. They don't necessarily always adapt to your schedule. Not necessarily. To the best yeah. of your ability. Yeah, I definitely try to meet people where they are in that regard. Um, I'd say Monday is probably like the hardest or mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. biggest day. Everyone seems to want to check in on Monday or like Sunday night when they've already meal prepped. That just seems to be bodybuilding culture. Right. Diet starts <laughs> right. on Monday. So that seems to be the largest check-in day or largest preferred check-in day. But I have some people it works out great to check in Thursday yeah. or Friday even. And roughly how many clients do you serve? We do... About 60 competitors right now, and then we probably have another 30 that are lifestyle just myself. Okay. And then we have our other coaches as well, and Roseanne's in Canada, Cad and Zach are in California. So they have in-person and online wow. clients as well. And uh, Sarah does all the billing for that. But I, I have just found that where I'm at is like my sweet spot, and sure. that's how I can manage everyone and give a good service well. So, another, uh, that's another great yeah. point, though. You found what you said, my sweet spot to where I know that I can be my most efficient mm -hmm. and productive. Yeah. When I was younger, I could grow faster. Like if I only had 15 clients, it was easy to double to For 30 sure. Yeah. Sure. the next year. But now it's like a maybe five client gain per year, yeah. if even that. And, uh, I just know when I start feeling stretched. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The tricky point of the season for anyone that's a contest prep coach, it's really easy to overwhelm yourself in the November through December months mm -hmm. where you're not going to shows and you're not your typical mm -hmm. show schedule. Mm -hmm. Last year, I traveled all but five weekends going wow. to shows wow. of the whole year. Um, so basically... Four of those weeks, I think, were like before the Arnold. Mm -hmm. And I chose not to go to LA Fit Expo, which I... 
probably should have and could have gone because I had a client there competing. Yeah. But I knew what my schedule looked right. like. Yeah. But you have to factor in if, if you're a hands-on coach, going to the shows, being with clients and engaging with clients, mm-hmm. maybe not getting home until Sunday morning or Sunday night. So you got to factor that in. And, you know, as much as you want to do check-ins, you know, Monday through Friday, stuff is going to come in on Saturday and Sunday. And your clients are going to need to engage for you. Uh, you need to uh, kind of calculate for catastrophes right. to yeah, happen. Yeah. You know, like, you just can't push yourself so far that you can't have an emergency. Like, I have flood in my gym <laughs> right. uh, over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I had to take some time to clean that up, you know. Yeah. Adam, and, do, you, do you find yourself having to turn away clients? Yeah, but we can turn them away to, like, Good coaches. So, um, coaches that aren't attached to you. Yeah. If we feel like they need something else, absolutely. Wow. So, guys, I think that's extremely important to highlight is as a, as a business owner, Adam at times is able to recognize that he won't be able to give the service A that they either need or B because his schedule is so full. And so, at times, you pass off these potential clients that could be yours, that could be money, that could be reputation to another coach saying, hey, I just can't give you what you need right now. Or, hey, you need other areas maybe that I don't offer, maybe a different style of coaching. And in the long run, sure, it, it, it can be hard probably to be like, yeah, there goes an, a potential revenue stream and I'm going to pass it off. And I just think that's extremely important as business owners, entrepreneurs, that more of the merry is not always the answer. Qu- yeah. Quality over quantity. If I take someone on, I can't help but to get close to them. And if I feel like... Um I, I'm just going to end up getting hurt in the long run, you know? So uh, a good example of when this happened uh, recently, I had a client who just absolutely wanted to do keto yeah. no matter what. And and he sent him to visionary meals because we offer that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did tell him about your meals, of course. <laughs> but along with that, I did send them to someone that was just Fantastic. typically all keto. And not yeah. to say I don't do keto. Right. I really don't think this client in this instant needed it and i really think that they were not open to any sort of change and i felt like they were going to be leading their diet even though they were having me Mm -hmm. help them i'm like am i really helping you if we're just kind of doing what you say so i wanted someone who was more aligned with their approach yeah and uh that's fantastic i mean it shows where your priority is yeah absolutely honestly it shows where your priority is and we, t- we talk on here about product, but your product, you know, because as a business owner, you are the product. And if you're ultimately, your priorities are correct, um, that means your product takes the forefront. And even in this case, you're like, look, my product cannot be correct if you're not willing to do it. So then that's right. You need to go find somebody who's willing to fulfill that. Yeah. I had a client, too, who does a WBFF, or she was looking to compete with me and I sent her to Marcus Cottle because I don't know the first thing about that other federation mm-hmm. uh, you know most of my clients compete in the NPC and that's typically the organization I support the most yeah. so well and I think that's how it's also how you have built such a strong reputation amongst even other coaches in the area because you have sent them clients I'm sure they have sent you clients instead of telling a client hey let me put you on a two month waiting list and then I'll get back to you yeah. said no I'm going to send you to ex-coach it's no different than any other business whether you're construction uh, patio building you said hey I'm booked right now for the, the yep. remaining of summer I'm going to send you to the next guy no just do me one favor let them know that I sent you there yeah and that's I, and they're going to say you know what when they're when they're in the same situation they're going to send their people straight to you yeah I actually had a really interesting engagement with a client who trains with someone I know Mm -hmm. and she wanted to completely come over to me training nutrition and I I think her nutrition was the main thing that needed fixed I said I really want you to continue training with this person so they don't lose out 100% sure and I I think that that person was also you know with this virus and everything, they're probably struggling. And the last thing I want to do is add fuel to that fire. I said, why don't you talk to them and see if they would be open to you doing your diet with me? And then they still train you because if I'm that coach, I still want to be with that person in some capacity. Right. Um, 
or else I 100% lose that person. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what she decided to do. And I'm happy. He's happy. He was like, thanked me. It's like, I really appreciate you keeping her in my hands in some capacity. Well, because you're invested. Yeah. He said most coaches just would completely take in my client. And she trains in person with him. And I I can't do that here. And I I said, you know, I I don't want to see other people hurt for my benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. That's important. Well, I think this is a great segue into the show because it's kind of on the term of balance. And Mark and I, you and I, we talk so much about the importance of balance amongst so many businesses out there. And I think an individual like yourself, you have to deal with a lot of balance. Now, fortunately, you know, for your situation, because you guys chose not to have kids, don't have any kids, which on that realm makes things a little bit easier. But at the same time, you have built such an empire where balance to having a healthy relationship maybe with your wife, Sarah, and any other individuals, friends, partners, uh, core nutritions, visionary meals, et cetera, et cetera, to have a relationship with that takes balance. So what are some things that you have implemented in your life where maybe you have learned the hard way or you know, you've had it figured out since day one? Men completely have learned the hard way with <laughs> okay. balance. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Talk about it. I mean, honestly, guys, I think it, it took um, a lot of evolution. When you're starting your business, you're going to grind mm-hmm. endlessly. And then what happens when we do something for a repetitive amount of time? It becomes a habit. Right. And uh, I think I got to a point where, uh, like, honestly, it came down to, and I'm open to sharing hard things, where my wife had to wake me up and say, yeah. if you don't slow down, yeah. I am going to be gone. Right. And no matter how rich I am financially, yeah. I'm the poorest person in the world without her. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah, that's amazing. one thing that I could tell my other entrepreneurs out there is that your wife has a choice to be with you or not be with you. I think where this hurts me the most is my family Mm -hmm. because my family doesn't have the choice to choose me and they want to be with me and they want to see me. And when you're 100% like I am all the time, that has became difficult. So what a great time with this virus to (laughs) connect with people, just call to check and make sure they're okay. And I feel like I have gotten a chance to uh, balance that better. I think it's always uh, pulling for me, though, to see my mom more. And uh, she lives six hours away. So it's difficult because it's like that sweet spot of, well, I can drive there in almost the same amount of time I can fly by the time I actually wait at the airport and everything. There's just no real easy way to make that happen. So it really comes down to calling more Mm -hmm. and you know, I think we all have um, open hearts, but sometimes the stubbornness of our adult minds don't allow us to um, reach out to people. Yeah. And women are interesting. So um, in a mother's regard, um, moms can be like, I'm not going to call until he calls. <laughs> and I don't think my yeah. mom's doing that, but I think women in general... For sure have expectations and unless we discuss those expectations absolutely and that's actually something i told my mom i was like hey like it's easy for you to feel a certain way sometimes so like honestly never feel just like i talked about my client never feel like i have a closed door like always reach out to me if you need anything and me and my wife also had this conversation. We're both middle children or youngest sibling. We think that parents typically call the oldest sibling when they need something. Okay. So I think that can make a little more of a disconnect mm-hmm. with oh, family sometimes yeah. when you're a younger sibling. So I just really had to open the door with my mom and uh, also just let her know how important she is to me and also compare that to, hey, I know I am really busy, but I just want to let you know, regardless of how busy I am, you're still really important to me, Mm -hmm. you know? I think this applies to not just our share, anybody listening, you know, we use the word balance, they automatically think 50-50. Right. And, you know, we've we've heard Adam, and I know Josh and I have talked about this multiple times, you know, especially in life, balance doesn't necessarily have to be that 50-50. Right. But what it means is you got to make sure that you make time for those things that are important. 
right. uh, that you should prioritize. It's, it's because when you don't do that is when you're out of balance. Correct. So even if it's 80-20, if that's what's working, you know, if, if you and if Sarah's like, look, I just need this many hours with you a week or a date night, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as long as you're meeting those requirements until she decides that needs to change, then you are staying balanced. Or even conversations with your mother. It's, it's finding that spot where everybody is sufficed. Yeah. You know, that's what balance is. It doesn't just have to mean that whole 50-50. Right. That's a good point, Mark. I think balance really revolves around, like, with pleasing others. Yeah. Just that really open, authentic communication. Yeah. yeah. And that's just huge. Well, being authentic, like you said, so being able to show these individuals that you truly do care. Yeah. And it's 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 easy to get wrapped up into what you're passionate about or your work or your business or whatever that. But like Mark said, finding that window, whether it's 70-30, 80-20, 90-10 even, when that when you are doing that 30 20 10 percent whatever it is make sure you are all in on that 30 20 yeah. 10 percent well and i think i think the great point on this too is you we always have to kind of put ourselves in their shoes and understand that they can't put themselves in ours it's a good point it's it's not their passion they don't understand you know you could sit there and i know josh says i, I just work two hours on instagram posts i'm like two <laughs> hours on instagram posts? <laughs> like i don't do that right but, right you know spending time with him i understand that it takes time to produce quality content because this is this is your product this is your brand it's like a, it's like a commercial mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. tide does not put out a commercial in 10 seconds <laughs> no. you know it, it takes a week right so right. i get it but I have to understand they don't always get it. Right. And so mm-hmm. once once you can do that and, and take yourself out of it and understand they have to take themselves out of it, you can usually find that uh, common ground um, to where you can't expect so much from them. And then they sometimes will look at you like, okay, well, maybe I need to understand a little bit more. Right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, you are your family and they don't get to choose you. Yeah. So it's really important that uh, entrepreneurs do reach out to their families mm-hmm. and try to stay in contact for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so Adam, as we kind of progress towards the end of the show, I think an interesting little last segment for this episode specifically is, you know, all of us, if you are a business owner, entrepreneur, or even just an individual that is chasing a career, that's a, a normal nine to five, that that's where their passion lies or mm-hmm. whatever it might, whatever's paying their bills, you know, we, we all have or all should have goals, aspirations, dreams, this and that. But in order to reach those goals, dreams, and aspirations, we have to implement daily habits typically to reach those. So as we, as we conclude t- towards the end of the show, can you just share with some of our listeners some daily habits that you have used in the past that you currently use or even that you plan to use that have gotten you to where you are with the success that you have had? Yeah, it's actually funny. My board's covered, but uh, oh, I, I, I typically behind, behind there is a whiteboard. Yeah. So I time block and I really make sure that even though I'm my own boss, everything can feel like it's technically work. Yeah. And there's like productive work and there's not productive work. So I really have to divide where my attention goes. Mm-hmm. So the first part of my day, I actually dedicate completely to myself and my clients and i actually don't pick up my phone That's till amazing. about one o'clock yeah so every you, day your, your phone's buzzing instagram notifications going off you're just putting that stuff aside right i now. usually put that aside and my biggest thing is to focus on the things i actually wanted to get done which are usually client check-ins and things of that nature i might even uh, just exercise a little bit or go on a walk just to get my mind right and yeah. um, make sure that the endorphins are flowing a little bit before I okay. check emails. So I think having that positive mindset always resonates into those mm-hmm. emails. Mm-hmm. And I notice if I do like a arm workout or something, my emails are just so much better than if I just, you know, go to my computer straight out of bed and okay. work. So yeah. that makes a big difference. I, I also, I do wake up and I try to be thankful for something. Awesome. And a lot of times, like, it's my dogs, you know, or <laughs> my <laughs> wife. And, yeah. you know, interestingly enough, when I woke up and my gym was flooded, I looked over at my dogs and they were still sitting there wagging their tails. They were yeah. barking at the ducks that happened to <laughs> all of a sudden be in my backyard. And I thought, you know what? If this whole house and everything gets washed up, there's still hope that less is more and I can still be happy with 
some of the things around me. Yeah. And there's so much more than just, uh, you know, houses and cars and things of right. that nature. And all that stuff can just be swept away from you. You mm-hmm. don't take it with you. Mm-hmm. I think the one guarantee we have in this life is lighting torches of positivity through other people that you meet. Yeah. So that's free, guys. And that's a really amazing thing. You can literally light someone's day up, even with this virus going on, just by reaching out to them. And then that's going to make their day good, and then they're going to reach out to someone else. That has a forever eternal impact on Mm -hmm. this earth. That's cool. So um, you can choose to be a garbage truck and spread garbage all day long. So there's people that can have the opposite effect. So um, just being that light that lights every candle along the way, that's the one guarantee that we for sure knowingly have on this earth. And uh, I think that's key. Josh and I speak on it. I call it the wake effect. I know a lot of people use the word legacy. Uh, Legacy tends to get attached to celebrity. But I always call it the wake effect. I mean, mm-hmm. as, as a boat goes by, it's just a ripple effect, and right. it just continues on. And uh, I think that's what we all should be doing. I, I think for all our listeners, if you understand something, what what he's saying, just to put it down in just a real commonality, is he invests in himself first. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think it's so important that we all do that. Right. Um, because like we say, if the best you is the best for everybody. Mm-hmm. And if you can't be the best you, then obviously that wake effect and that lighting of the candles is not going to work right. And right. you're going to have a negative effect, even if you are trying to have a positive effect. Yeah. And to end that, that's one of my things that I um, kind of look at before I start my day. I actually got that in a fortune cookie that was a good man makes everyone feel good. <laughs> I love it. Yes. And I, love it. I literally Chinese, think dude. about that every day before I start engaging Absolutely. with clients. Now, sometimes I have to give hard news that I know is going to, in the long term, make them feel better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... I had a client not do well at the Arnold. I said, I'm going to tell you something that I know you're not going to like, (laughs) but you're going to thank me later. And I said, you prepped hard for about four weeks for this. And I said, if you could do a full 12 week or 16 week prep, Mm -hmm. I said, I think you're going to be amazed with what you can do. I said, I want you to remember how you feel right now because you're crying and upset. Yes. So when you prep next time, you work so hard that you're like, I'm never going to feel like this again when I do a show. And she was like, you're totally right. And uh, I know that's hard news, but I delivered it as politely as I could and as nicely. And I think that I think she actually still felt good after that conversation. Yeah, that's amazing. Spreading that positivity. You got to have that every day. Mark, uh, Adam, you guys have you have anything else as we kind of conclude this episode? I think more of the story is there is so much meat left on this bone. This will not be the last time that us three come together. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I, I, th- I think for all of our listeners, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, I, I think there's so much you can gain um, from Adam and his approach on life and the way he does mm-hmm. his business. I think if you're an entrepreneur, obviously you see the value of relationships. Yeah. I think you honestly heard too, um, we, we, we talk about the grind mm-hmm. and I think so many of our entrepreneurs don't understand that. Um, they think if I grind for a week, a month, six months, I'm right. going to be in the go. Here's an 18 year grind. Right. Um, and it's constantly evolving, you know, and, and for our non, our non listeners, I mean, I think you just listen to this and you're like, these are people I want to surround myself with. This is the mindset I want to take into life because it doesn't always have to apply to business. Yeah. It just literally applies to value of life. Right. Um, and you know what it, I thought the great point, and maybe it's the softest point of the conversation is, is in this time of non-essential and essential, what is essential? Good point. You know, mental health is essential. Mm-hmm. Um, just being physically healthy is essential. Yeah. You know, I hate the word diet, but food lifestyle right. is essential. Mm-hmm. And these are things I think uh, we as a society could take far more serious. Yeah. Some of us small business owners do contribute to essential business. Absolutely. Um, I had a client get laid off. I paid her to clean my house because yeah. she was worried Absolutely. about amazing. stuff. Yes. And Sarah was gone. And I'm like, I could use some work around yep. here. And like, yep. I know it's not a long-term job, but I can at least help you for a day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Know? Yeah, Absolutely. that's I mean that's something Mark and I talked about in our last episode about implementing like what two days a week that we just support a local business, um, whether it's carry out food or something. And if you like can that. do more, do more. You know, right. I tell people I don't want to talk about anybody's money. I just know this is something that uh, I saw somebody doing. I spoke with my wife. We have five children. 
Um, so, you know, anytime we support local, it's expensive, <laughs> right. but we, we knew we're blessed and we're like, this is something we can do in a way we can give back. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Adam and Josh earlier, I'm tipping people now. I've normally nobody tips, but I'm <laughs> right. tipping people now because gosh, A, I'm happy they're just there. Right. And B, I understand how stressful this time is. Yeah. yeah you know? That's great. You said that. And that was something I noticed kind of flooded social media yeah. after DeWine's announcement. Yeah. And I didn't go out because honestly, I was just wanting to keep a little germ free. <laughs> right. But I thought if I did, I want to tip these restaurant mm -hmm. workers heavily one last time before they... Well, I know. had a restaurant tell me, she's like, we're not allowed to accept tips. I go, then don't consider it a tip, consider it a gift. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. It. You know what I mean? I, love it. I said, Slide just it split there. it with everybody here. I said, yeah. I'm not... I said, honey, I'm not going to post it. I'm not going to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just... I appreciate you guys being open. I really do. Did you and, see that couple gave like 10 grand to a restaurant I saw and they were one. like divided wow. out? Um, I was like, that's super cool. I saw Five hundred dollar tip. I've seen some mega tips. That's I have I'm like that too, and that's and if, gonna help a you lot. Can, absolutely, if especially you can, the small business. Josh and I were just talking. You know, this, the small business thing, and the government worked very hard to create some type of stimulus, and I really hope that it helps a lot of small businesses. And we've had people say, "Yeah, but I mean, that's not a lot of money considering all the small businesses." Most of our small businesses, though, can they can do so much with a thousand dollars. Correct. Mm -hmm. They can do so much with two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Um, and I think people too many times use the word business and instantly think of the limited brands or whatever. Mm -hmm, right. No, small businesses, a lot of times right now we're sitting in Adam's beautiful office, which is connected to your home. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, the, we didn't drive into a large corporate building. No. Thousand dollars goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, so your uh, any tips, that's all I think. If I tip a hundred bucks, that's a hundred bucks. These people didn't have, maybe that's their groceries, the milk, the diapers. Yes. I don't know yeah. what it yeah. is, but I hope it just goes to be used in a good way. And hopefully it just makes them, you know, have a more positive evening than they would have had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, like that has a lifelong impact That's on right. people. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Our time here is so short. I want everybody to understand our time on this earth is so short. So we should utilize it to have the longest lasting effect, Fantastic. a positive longest yeah, effect. No doubt. Yeah, that's uh, one way that I kind of do view at least eternal life on earth is how positive of an mm -hmm. impact mm -hmm. you can touch absolutely. each person. It's it's going to carry on. I know my father and my uh, brother still live through me very heavily today. Yeah. Um, yeah. And all the positive stuff absolutely. they did. Um, the same with my mom and sister, you know, heaven forbid they pass, you know, they will definitely live through me and currently still do, even though they're alive, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's amazing, Adam. So Adam, as we conclude this segment, is there, is there anything that you would like to leave the listeners with? Um, as whether they're listening to this while they're working out, whether they're listening to this driving to uh, wherever, is there something as they conclude and walk away from this podcast that you want them to be thinking about as they walk away? Just that we can get through this and this is going to make everything else we go through a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. yep. I think that this is going to make life the things that we thought were such a big deal yeah. are not that big of a deal anymore. Yeah. And I think that that's one major lesson that we can learn from this, like it or not, that virus is here. And I think it's teaching us all some pre major life lessons. Mm -hmm. And I think we will get through this yeah. and uh, stay positive. Don't, let the virus stop you. Even if you don't catch the virus, keep chasing your goals and dreams. They mm -hmm. still exist. You may have to be dynamic in your approach and you may have to change your route a bit, but you can still get there. That's amazing. Absolutely. I love it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you guys just heard it from himself, Adam Atkinson, the diet doc. See you later, leaner. A brand amongst brands, guys. One of the leading coaches in the Ohio area, one of the leading coaches in the nation. If you just if you didn't know before, you do now that he is one of the most genuine, um, authentic individuals that you will ever meet. Adam, it has been a pleasure having you on the yeah. show. I, I know there's gonna be another time. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, we didn't we didn't talk a lot about it, but fortunately, Adam and I uh, get the opportunity to work together through our two brands. And of course, this segment is brought to you by Visionary Meals, a healthy meal prep company, guys, based out of the Central Ohio area. And I know we're going to have an influx of listeners from Adam's clients all over the region. Guys, our meals are going to be nationwide. Stay tuned for that. We are working very fast on that. We appreciate Team Green support day in and day out, guys. The local clients have been amazing. And we get questions all the time from Adam's clients out of state and, and, and wherever you guys might be from. I don't know about Australia yet. We'll, we'll address <laughs> that when we get there. Um, but again, Visionary Meals, a healthy meal prep company, guys, taking care of you guys in this time. And once again, see you later, later. Adam Atkinson, the Diet Doc. Thank Th you so much. Thanks for having me. Fantastic, guys. This is Deliberately Link signing out. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace. <laughs>